Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Six young Brits are on the journey of a lifetime. They're heading deep into the North American wilderness. But this is no ordinary trek. He was having thoughts of beating her up, of punching her in the face. I just keep seeing it over and over again, him just lying there lifeless at the bottom. They've all signed up to a radical treatment programme for mental illness. I want to tap the wall with my elbow. You might have been born with a stupid voice. I was. Because all of them have obsessive compulsive disorder. It's impossible to describe what turmoil my brain is in. The lid, in case my clothes touched it. The flusher. This is pathetic. This is not how my life should be. OCD has robbed them of their independence and made living normal lives impossible. They've been unable to get the treatment they need and they're desperate for help. My parents have been through so much. I hate the man I feel I should have been at 22 that I'm not at 22. He's so pissed off that OCD has robbed him of his life. So in a last ditch attempt to reclaim their lives, they'll spend the next 10 days at one of the world's most extreme OCD camps. <laughs> 22-year-old Essex boy Jack is about to do something he hasn't done in almost a decade. You ready? Yeah. OK. Drink from a glass in a public place. He's undergoing radical treatment to combat his pathological fear of germs. It's like... Jack is out shopping with his mum, buying essentials for his trip to the States. I need, um... Toothbrush. Toothpaste. Toothbrush, toothpaste, soaps. Oh, yeah. Paper rolls, paper plates, Not knives and forks. Don't want that one, because it's got the, it's it's got the black on it. He's petrified of getting sick, so going anywhere without his own disposable plates and cutlery is unthinkable. It's cold, kind of lovely. Jack suffers from contamination OCD. He sees germs lurking everywhere, even in the relative safety of his own home. He spends every waking moment avoiding contamination. I've not eaten something with my hands, so with my fingers, since I was 15. Mealtimes are the most stressful part of Jack's day. He has to sterilise everything his food touches. I can't touch the milk handle. So when my milk would, say, get poured in slightly on porridge, I'd have to have someone there to do it. You know, my mum, who lives in me, she'll be the one that will pour that in. It's a 20, 25 minute, half hour sometimes process before I've even eaten. It robs a little bit of dignity from me. Like, the whole time I'm just sitting there thinking, you know, like, this is really pathetic. This is not how my life should be. In an effort to turn his life around, Jack's committed to 10 days at an extreme OCD camp in the US. He and five other OCD sufferers are on their way to London to stay the night before flying to America tomorrow. Jack's the first to arrive at the hotel. How's it going? You right? Hi. Lovely, thank you. If I could just get your address, uh, suit you here. I've got a pen here. I've got my own ones, honestly. OK. Touching someone else's pen is not an option. Oh, God. Do I have to sign this now? Can I come down and sign this once I've taken my bags up? 
Uh, yeah, that's, that'd be fine. Cheers. 22-year-old Josh is next to arrive. How far have you come from? We've come from Blackpool, so um, quite far. For the best part of 10 years, Josh has been plagued by symmetry OCD. I have such everything with my left and right hands, my left and right feet, um, equal amount of times everywhere I go, 24 7. It's constant, it's such that, such that, such that, such that. You haven't touched it yet, why haven't you touched it? It's, it's constant, it's constantly there. I remember burning myself when I was 13 years old on my left hand on an oven at my nan's house. I felt compelled to burn me other two fingers on my right hand quite badly as well. OCD has caused Josh to drop out of university and he can't get a job. He hopes that going to OCD camp will get his life back on track. I'm hoping that when I go on the camp, um, it will improve my life, my social life, and hopefully it might help me to find someone. Imogen is next to arrive at the hotel. At 17, she's the youngest member of the group. I'm feeling nervous. I don't think it quite feels real yet, but maybe when I meet everyone, it'll be like, oh my God, it's actually happening. <laughs> A-level student Imogen is plagued by thoughts that terrible things will happen to her family. She believes the only way to stop these bad things happening is to constantly tap her surroundings. It really does scare me, like, the thought of, I don't know, like, if you don't tap that tree, your mum's gonna die, you know? It's not logical, because it's just a tree, but that fear is so strong that it, it just feels so real to me. Next to check-in is 21-year-old university student, Olivia. At the moment, I'm feeling about a nine on the anxiety level because I really, really, really want a shower because um, I've been lugging these bags around London and I've been extremely warm and I'm very, very warm now in this hotel room. In fact, actually, I might open the window. Like Jack, Olivia suffers from contamination OCD, but it's not germs that bother her, it smells. If you think of your biggest fear, some people's biggest fear of getting ill, maybe, or dying, my biggest fear is anything that smells bad. When I'm showering, it feels like someone is, every time I feel like I'm clean, is throwing a bucket of mud on me. And then I have to start again. Using the toilet is Olivia's biggest nightmare. So she's developed an extraordinary way of coping. I would make sure I took photos of sort of the seat, um, maybe the lid in case my clothes touched it. Um, the, the, the flusher and the floor. Any kind of mark on the floor I will take a photo of and then afterwards, if I was still anxious about it, I could look at the photo and I could be reassured or I could show someone the photo and they could reassure me that there's nothing wrong with that mark. I just like to be able to make my own judgments, make my own calls on things um, and just go about day-to-day -day life without it controlling me, without controlling every move. The group are about to meet each other for the very first time. For most of them, it will be the first time they've met anyone else with OCD. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. How are you doing? You right? I'm Jack. Olivia, nice to we meet you. Out? Yeah, we, we can vlog. That's OK. Hi. How are you? Come and see. How are you doing, right? Okay. I'm Jack. Hi. Do you want Nice to meet you. I'm Olivia. Yeah, I'm Andrew. How old are you? 23. 23. It's getting older. Yeah. I'm 21. 22. And I'm one year old, so yeah, one up each time. My OCD does primarily revolve around avoiding the number 13. Andrew repeats the most simple actions over and over again to be certain that he never does anything 13 times. So 
that'll probably do now. Andrew sees the number 13 all around him. Every hour it comes to 13 minutes past, so, you know, be between 10 past and 20 past every hour, uh, I cannot do anything. Ideally, I'll just sit completely like a statue. If I so much as touch my lip with my tongue, I have to do that again when it gets to 20 past. As well as OCD, Andrew has Asperger's, which makes social situations very difficult for him. I just wish I could chat more. I'd like to be able to be able to express myself a bit more instead of being in a shell. We're just talking about tattoos. All oh, right, I've not got any. 18-year-old <laughs> Megan from Nottingham arrives next. Nice How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. She's constantly plagued by thoughts that people she loves are going to be harmed. How are you feeling? I'm excited. Yeah? Are you? Yeah. How are you feeling? See, we're all a bit like... Mm. I'm nervous. I was kind of, like, regretting it a little bit before. What do you think? This yeah. morning, I was a bit like, oh, God, what have I done? <laughs> Olivia, nice to meet Olivia, you. Nice Hi. Meet you. <laughs> Sorry, man, I'm not handshaking. Sorry, noise. OK, I'm Andrew. Andrew, nice to meet you, nice to How are you doing? Yes. You all right? I'm not too bad, yeah, a little bit nervous, but... Um, I bet. It goes, yeah. Welcome to a strange, surreal dinner. Yes, yes, <laughs> a little bit. How far you come from? Blackpool. Yes! Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Yes. What's going on? Well, are you the only southerner? I'm the only southerner, right? Well, yeah, it feels slightly <laughs> racist. Yeah. The last to arrive is Imogen. Hi. Olivia. Hello. Hey, Jim, where you come from? Uh, Hertfordshire. Southerner. Thank you. As the group start to get to know one another, the conversation moves on to OCD. I, like, pick up a glass of water and I'd have to do it with my left hand and my right hand. Uh, is that why you shake with two hands? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought you are just extra friendly. No. I was like, oh, lovely. <laughs> I think, obviously, the nature of the beast is that a hell of a lot of it isn't what you can see. So other people, like, my best friends don't know yeah. until I tell them. It's mainly intrusive thoughts, so... Thoughts... It's always that thoughts about bad things happening to my family and friends. It's always about preventing harm. Thoughts soon turn to OCD camp. The trek sounds really scary and it'll scare me when I get up to it, but it, it was just meeting everyone and wondering what everyone's going to be like. Yeah. I really don't like surprises. What is everyone's goal for the week? Besides my routines, you know, I just want to in increase my uh, independence, make, yeah. make some more friends. I'd be extremely happy if there was just one minute of a day where I wouldn't have to do my things. I would love to, like you, Josh, to have a minute out of the day where I'm not carrying out some compulsion in my head. I'm not really expecting, like, a miracle cure or anything, but no. if something changes or maybe this will help in some way, it would just be brilliant, really. <laughs> Tomorrow is the start of their journey together, one that could change their lives forever. It's departure day. It's nothing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Ready? Let's go. The group are about to leave the safety of their home turf and fly over 5,000 miles to the USA. For Josh, even the journey is a source of anxiety. It's the fear of not being able to get out of the um, seat when you're not allowed to, you know, that's the only thing I, I don't like, have, not having that control. And Josh isn't the only one with problems. Welcome to the toilet. But obviously right now I'm not going to use it myself because that is disgusting. If I'm needing to use the toilet and the seat's down, which the majority of the time it is, I'll just use my foot to lift it up. And again, the flushing, obviously I'll use my foot. They're heading to Seattle on America's northwest coast. For the next 10 days, they'll undergo intense therapy deep in the Washington wilderness. Hello. Hello. Hi. Therapist Pete Weiss and psychologist Dr. Travis Osborne are OCD experts and have been running their OCD camp for five years. Pete and Travis have already spent hours on Skype consulting with each of the group. Meeting Pete, he kind of had a little bit of celebrity status in my head because I'd like spoken to him so much and you know in preparation for coming here and he's someone that's got such a big role in possibly making me better. Pete's no stranger to taking OCD sufferers on wilderness trips, but this camp's going to be a bit different. This is the first time I've ever taken a group um, with this severe of OCD with the goal of helping them to work on their OCD. 
It feels like we're treading new ground, which is exciting, um, but it, it also makes me a little bit nervous. 14 hours after leaving London, they finally arrive. You guys, we made it. We're at Island. What? Do you want to see your rooms? Yes. 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 Let's, go. Sure. Let's go. Oh, wow. Wow. Any bed, honestly, I'll take a single. You want double them? You can go on double, yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. Quite fancy a bunk bed. I find it quite fancy an up one, yeah. <laughs> Which one do you want? Which top? What? Right. <laughs> the group have come almost halfway around the world. But tomorrow, their real journey begins. <laughs> it's the first day of OCD camp. Pete and Travis and their team have got just over a week to help the group reclaim their lives by taking on their OCD. This extreme program will force the Brits to fight their OCD by getting them to face their biggest fears and do things they'd never dream of doing back home. Exposing to the fear, not doing the ritual, then we raise the bar and do it again, and raise the bar and do it again. Straight after breakfast, the battle begins in a place Jack fears the most, the bathroom. We're trying to find a spot, whether it's a wall or something on the wall, ceiling, that you can touch. Is there anywhere within the actual room where the toilet exists that you could actually do that? Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> as far away from the toilet as possible. OK, let's just have you touch it with the pinky and then just kind of hold that pinky up <laughs> for a while. <laughs> How's that sound? Oh, yeah. I'm still taking my sleeves up though, because I don't want to get my okay. sleeves up. Yeah, again. you gotta be precautionary. <sighs> okay, it's there. What could be on your pinky? Bacteria of the toilet seat and just the what this toilet what this room's about and um yeah, like water from the toilet when it's been flushed and because it's not got like a seat to it properly and so this is what we're going to do, Jack. I don't always do this, but I think it's actually going to help you. We're, we're going to have you touch your pinky around your body because I think it's actually going to make it, it's going to be harder at first, but then it will get easier faster. Get that bacteria, pee, urine, nastiness all over you. My mouth went dry, my chest was beating, I was like sweating, I, my eyes were darting around the room, I couldn't focus, like, I felt kind of like I was going to faint. Although it may seem like a very kind of like simple task for everyone else, it was actually a big ordeal. In Travis's group, Josh is first up. He's about to be exposed to his greatest fear. His challenge is not to ritualize. Your goal is going to be to touch something with one side of your body. You can choose whether it's with your hand or your arm or your leg, whatever you choose. We're going to try to have you go five minutes without uh, equalizing it out on the other side. So what could you touch with your foot? So I'll just, I'll just equalize. Equalize. Like that. I'll just e okay. It's even about just that line right there. This line right here. Yeah. Okay. So like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's try that again without without equalizing. Okay, I'll have another go. All right. Okay. So let's have you sit back down. Okay, you that did you see your body pulling you yeah. to redo it? Okay. Now, what's happening with your anxiety right now? I feel I feel all right, but I think it... Yeah. You feel all right, but what? I need... Yeah. <laughs> you get it. Yeah. And you can feel it already, can't you? Yeah. I think we all can see the second you do that, we can just see your face instantly change, right? Can your family tell? Yeah, yeah, they, right? they know that... Yeah. You get tongue-tied. They know what... Yeah. They know when I get... It's like a switch, just, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's, like it's very switch. annoying when it's you're that be... confident, confident and yeah. it just sort of just drains what it... Yeah, it's not yeah. nice. Three minutes into his exposure, Josh has an overwhelming urge to touch the line. Is it in general harder with your feet than your hands or is it usually about the same? Yeah, no, um, I mean, no, no. Um, it's, it's not, it's, not it's, it's the same, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Think you can make it another two minutes? Yeah. All right. Moments later, Josh has reached his limit. Josh? Yeah? Can I go with you? Yeah. You're at time, so if you want to ritualize, you can, OK? Yeah. 
can you try to talk to me mm -hmm. for a sec? Yeah, Is your anxiety climbing? Uh, it's, no, it's fine now. I did it. I did it. I did it. Oh, because when you walked over the line, you yeah. touched it? Yeah. Okay. So it just felt like you couldn't go any longer. Yeah. Okay. I think you actually made it to five minutes, All right. which is great. So we'll let you cool down for a little bit before cool. we try again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just what I mean. I don't like running away. That's what all the day I know. seem to do. I know. But you're, we are just starting, yeah. right? Right? In most kind of situations, the natural response is just to get out there, just get out there as fast as you can because that's just what I've learned to do, you know, it's just become second nature now. Yeah, I'm a little, a little bit annoyed about running away. Back in the bathroom, Imogen is about to do her very first exposure. Are you ready? I'm a little bit. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Pete plans to trigger Imogen's fear that something bad will happen to her family, but not let her tap to compensate. He'll ask her to rate her anxiety on a scale of 1 to 10. What's the tiniest, most minute movement that would cause you to want to tap? Um, stepping forward. OK. So what I want you to do is you're going to move your foot just the tiniest little bit. Go for it. I know it's in my head. I know it's not real. So <laughs> I want you to say something different than that, though. This is going to be harder. <laughs> Maybe. It's real. Maybe it's real. Nice work. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> that is fantastic. Maybe it's real. OK, just stop there. What do you have? Um, quite high, pretty bad, like a five. <laughs> yeah, a little higher than we wanted to, but we're just going to sit there. What do you want to do for a ritual? I want to tap the wall with my elbow. Yeah, I can tell that's hard. When I moved my foot forward, I instantly was aware of all my surroundings, all these thoughts going around my head. Like, I had really, really powerful thoughts about bad things happening to my mom, which was very, very scary. Can you, can you say it again? The maybe statement. Maybe it's real. Maybe it's real. Maybe it's real. Yeah, good work. You're doing so well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this, so is, well. this is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. This is really, obviously, very tough. You are a picture of courage right now. Yeah. What you just did was phenomenal, but it doesn't mean your OCD is going to go away because you're going to move and you're going to do a ritual in just a few moments here, and that is okay. That doesn't mean that it's not going to get better or that you should lose hope. After waiting over an hour with contaminated hands, Jack ends his exposure by washing. The group have made it through their first day of therapy. With exposures over, they can stop fighting their OCD. Until tomorrow. After a long, hard day, everyone gets a chance to chill by the campfire. Well, you guys survived your first full day of OCD camp. How do you feel? Tired. 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 Yes, I bet you guys worked really hard today. What you guys got a taste today of when we started exposure therapy was how hard it is to actually fight this beast, right? So what we've asked you all to think about is kind of what your OCD has cost you. And these are the things you're going to need to keep in mind in those key moments uh, when what you want to do is kind of just give in to the OCD to help you push and find a way to keep fighting. The reason I want to fight and beat my OCD is because uh, I'm just fed up with it after so long. It's, it does no good. It's made me lie to my family many times. And it's made me lie to my friends and people that I shouldn't have lied to just because it's much easier than to say that you've got OCD. I'm just completely done now with letting it be the biggest part of my life. I hate everything about it, and I hate everything about the what it's taken away from me, and I hate the 
man I feel I should have been at 22 that I'm not at 22. I owe it to myself to fight it as hard as I can fight anything. I hope one day I can grow up and I can have a family and a job and not have to worry about what I'm going to have for dinner or <laughs> can I make it out the front door without tapping it like four times or something. That that would be quite nice. <laughs> My parents have been through so much. Um, like. My parents have been through so much supporting me. <laughs> they've just been amazing. My sister too, not just all my family. And they've kind of spent their whole life looking after me. And I feel like if I get better, then they've, they've kind of achieved something and they've helped me to get better. <laughs> um, just so they can live a stress-free life without worrying about me. I have a motto for you guys for this week. And the motto is with just one word. And that word is maybe. And there's a badge that comes along with maybe. And you're all going to get that badge in just a moment here. And the badge is the question mark. Whenever you look at this, it's a reminder that maybe the bad thing could happen. Maybe it could, maybe it couldn't. And I want you guys to take this with you for the rest of your lives. Are you ready for your tattoo? Well, I'm gonna have to. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> It's day two at Islandwood. Yesterday was stressful and disorientating for everyone. So Pete decides to kick off with a confidence building challenge out on the lake. But for Olivia, even this triggers her OCD. I don't know who's worn it. And life jackets usually smell like damp if people are falling in. And I just put clean clothes on and had a shower. <laughs> so I don't really want to wear it. And she's not the only one. This is the kind of thing where it's so... everyone's tightly together. You can't leave. Yeah. So let's say you do feel trapped, because there's a good chance that could happen. Mm. Um, and we're not going to let you jump overboard, so <laughs> you're going to have to wait. What I want you to do is I want you to tell me okay. that it's happening, OK? But pretty quickly, they all find their sea legs, even Jack. So I'm just curious how it went for you guys. See, it was absolutely fine. It was, it was fine, I enjoyed it. What did you learn about the difference between anticipating something and then the actual experience itself? Like, probably won't happen. Or maybe it will, maybe it won't. Like, probably, you know. Maybe. <laughs> Inspired by the raft challenge, Jack's motivated to push himself further than he's ever gone before. For almost a decade, Jack's been so fearful of germs that he's only drunk from disposable cups. You ready for this? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> but now he wants to try to drink from a glass that's been used by other people, with a little help from the Islandwood kitchen staff. There's Ben. All right, Ben. This is Jack. How you doing? You're nice right. to meet you, Jack. Hey. Ben. Cheers for help. Yeah. So it's not quite boiling yet, but Jack is saying that it's probably good enough. Okay. For him. So right. whenever you're ready to put a glass in, that would right. be fantastic. All right. So yeah, this is a hot cup. There's one condition. He needs to see the glass being sterilised. I don't like the water that's in there being too much on it, so as much as we can get out by like doing what he's doing now, it's perfect. You want me to set it on the... What do you, what would you like it set? Set down on? Um, uh, there's fine, wherever's fine, really, but yeah, just as long as it's the right way up. Perfect. And like I said, if you wait like one minute, all that water is evaporated. It's gone. That's perfect. Cheers. Hey, Ben, I want you to see what he's about to do. What's something that you were terrified of? What are you afraid of? <laughs> yeah, I always joke about this. Um, bears, lions, and uh, I'm not afraid of much. I, don't, I can't, that I can think of, actually. But, but 
the bears. Yeah. That's a good one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so if you were to walk into a cage with a bear. I wouldn't walk into a cage with a bear. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly the same mental process that yes. Jack is about to take when he takes a drink out of mm -hmm. this thing. It's like even like the, obviously even just touching the glasses a bit. Strange. It was weird. Like, When's the last time you drank out of a glass? Nine years ago. Wow. It was quite a it's impressive, yeah, strange feeling. I'd high five you if I could. Air bump. Yeah. Air bump with Ben, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> For Jack, this is a huge achievement, and he's keen to show off his latest victory over OCD to the others. This is the most self-conscious drink. supporting each other and I, I don't even know if I could have predicted that that would happen to this degree but it's so clear that they're they're simultaneously dealing with their own fears and their own exposures but then they're giving to others and that's phenomenal that they can shift out of that space and it's not just all about them Bye. Bye. <laughs> Pete has discovered that four hours after Imogen's exposure yesterday she returned to the bathroom to ritualise by tapping the wall. So today, he's going to raise the stakes. How could we do an exposure where it's impossible to do a ritual afterwards? I see your face just dropping. What would that thing be? Um, I don't know, like when I'm walking, like sometimes I have to like tap certain stones and. So if we went for a walk outside, and if you stop where you want to actually do a, a ritual on a certain stone, that's what you're telling me we could do? Mm hmm Okay, we'll start the exposure, and then we'll make a decision about whether or not we're gonna throw the rock anywhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. That one, mm -hmm. already? Yeah. Okay, right tell me, if you were to get rid of this rock or not tap it, what's, what could happen? Um, something bad, late to my family. What's the statement? <laughs> Maybe something bad will happen. Again? Maybe something bad will happen. Again? Maybe something bad will happen. <laughs> oh dear. Imogen's frozen to the spot for half an hour before she's able to calm down. So, let's talk about what we're going to do with this rock. Can you take it? You want me to? What, what do you want me to do? Is I just pick it up right now? Hold it? Okay. Put it in your pocket? Yep. Can I see how I go? Yes, we can. We can just keep this in my pocket and we'll see how it goes. I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah. You're welcome. This is another full day of therapy. Everyone is going head to head with their OCD. Megan is plagued by thoughts of bad things happening to people. So Travis wants her to look at a picture of her friend and imagine her getting sick. You're going to get ill. Okay, and what do you notice about your anxiety right now? Probably two or three. Okay. Yesterday, Josh managed to wait five minutes before ritualizing. Today, 
He wants to break that record. What would you like to set up the goal for this time? I'd say, put it, I'd, if you put it at 10, and I, I can see you've been counting down. Mm -hmm. I think that would be quite good. All right, so you go ahead. What do you want to do this time? All right. <laughs> you want to do it yet? Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> How high is the anxiety around it right now? It's, um, it's, I'd, I'd say it's on like a three. Three. Okay, yeah. so a little bit lower yeah, yeah, than yesterday. Yeah. Okay. While Josh rides out his exposure, Olivia's challenging her fear of smelling badly. Okay. It takes coffee, that bit. It does. <laughs> You ready? Mm -hmm. All right, go for it. Go this way. Great. Keep your hand there for a minute, and then we'll just go straight for the hair. <clears throat> Good work. Okay. So, Josh, where's your anxiety at right now? I'm not too sure. Okay. Is it over a five? Yeah. Okay. Is it over a seven? I don't know. I want to go. Okay. So you're feeling really strongly like you want to yeah. go. Okay. And do you know what it is about leaving that helps? It's being alone, it's, be, it's just being alone. Okay. It's being alone when it's, yeah. Okay. Like a pink at once. Yeah. Josh makes it to the 10 minute mark. It's the longest time he's ever gone without equalizing. Two and one. Okay. Nicely done. Are you feeling exhausted? Yeah. <laughs> Not good. I bet. I bet you are. Everyone's making progress. But back on the porch, Pete's about to start working with his most complex case. Andrew's OCD is very severe. He's probably the most severe in the group. And it's further complicated by the fact that he has Asperger's. He's afraid of the number 13. He is afraid of contamination. The uncomfortable feeling he gets if he doesn't ritualize is intolerable. Pete is starting with Andrew's contamination OCD. He's asked him to put his dirty hands on his skin. Does that come off now? Nope, hands on the head still. You're doing a fantastic job. I know. This feels like it's getting more I know. Worse. I know, I'm a bastard. Thank you. <laughs> what was the maybe statement? Can you say it? Maybe my skin will get bad on my forehead. He's not just saying it because that's the only words. Uh, I don't like sound of my own voice. Say it. Um, yeah, maybe my skin will like flare up, get pretty bad. Louder. I'm feeling really like bothered now. Jack, can you help me out again? So we'll open this door. Before Pete can begin to treat Andrew's OCD, he needs to tackle his crushingly low self-confidence. There's no, it's never gonna ruin out. It's just, it's not gonna happen. I am tempted just to shout, but I, it just sounds so ridiculous. My spots might get bad and flare up. I can't get any more than that because my voice really kicks in any louder than that. I, I don't, I don't want to fail, but I do not want to shout while people are about. Andrew, see, maybe my voice is completely stupid. My voice is completely stupid. I have a completely stupid voice. I have a completely stupid voice. Yeah, you say that with such confidence. Yeah, say it again. It's just the truth. Yeah, it's true. It's totally yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, maybe it's true. So I'm, I'm plagued totally with for the rest I'll of my life. You might have a stupid voice. You might have been born with a stupid voice. Yeah, actually, hearing you say that really annoys me because it's just true. That's what people have always told me. What's that? I've got a stupid voice. You're right. But I don't, you actually said it. I said maybe. I'm pretty angry now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people have thought he just can't communicate properly with his voice. Yeah. So if you shout, you might be rejected by all of us. Like you were rejected when you were a kid. I've always been rejected, yeah. Yeah. There's a difference between then and now. We're not children. 
Andrew just has, a, you know, it's a monolithic barrier to what he wants to really do in life, to what he can do, because the fear is that he's absolutely worthless. So he has this massive hurdle that he's trying to jump over, and it's just, um, it's almost unbearable to watch. He's got one last chance to make Jack hear him. My spots could get quite bad or flare up. I deserve that. I deserve that. How do you feel? I think we're okay. What's that? We're okay. I'm so hoping that you feel at least a little tiny bit proud of yourself for what you just did. I don't know why you try with me. I'm such a loser. I don't, know. I don't even know why you're trying. We try because we see something you don't. That's the problem, right? You wouldn't be here if that wasn't the problem. If there is a proud feeling in your brain, a proud thought, my suggestion is to take that seriously. Right now, I do feel pleased that I spoke a bit louder. Actually, I think it's improved my voice because now that I've sort of projected it a bit more and I'm speaking quiet, I think it sounded a little better. I think it might have actually somehow helped with vocal cords or something. Tomorrow, everything is going to change. The group are getting ready to leave the comfort of Islandwood Lodge. We are going to shift gears now, and we are heading tomorrow into the wild unknown. And we have to get ready and we have to get packed. As much whatever you take, you're gonna carry on your back. Yeah. yeah. So if you take a lot, you're gonna carry a lot. I'm really worried this bag's gonna be really heavy. Okay. You need one pair of these and that one pair of trousers. Is that it? And you're gonna wear them for three days, and it's gonna be okay. We gotta be up for, well, we gotta be up and out for half five, I think. That's going to be fun, but we are, we are going to into the high ropes course, which will be fun. Yeah, yeah. I think so. everyone's ready for the high ropes course, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. It's going to be good. We've all spent so long going about how much we're looking forward to it, and we get there, everyone's going to shit themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <Aren't they>? yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting outside now at about 12.30, even though we're just two days into eight of exposures. There's a few of us really struggling now. Myself included, I'm not going to sleep tonight. I don't think many of us are going to sleep tonight because it's, it's so intense. You know, we're a few hours away now, and uh, yeah, tomorrow's another day, but it's another hard day. I think everything's about to get harder. It's day three, and Pete has the group on the move. Moving is an important part of the therapy, as often people with OCD have difficulty leaving places as it adds to their anxiety. Howdy, how are you? Good. Pete's upping the stakes again. This time, a physical challenge with a real element of danger. They'll be clambering along inch-wide cables, 130 feet in the air. If they can push themselves to do this, it should give them more confidence to fight their OCD. It's high. It's high. I'm scared shitless. <laughs> oh, no. this is... The reason we're here is um, to help them learn how to live with uncertainty, to take all sorts of different <laughs> risks in life. Today, they will be taking actual risks. First to attempt the ladder is Imogen. Dave, I'm feeling No, I want to go straight down. We will. But if anything would happen to you, say you would faint. No worries, because let me tell you what will happen. I've got you, and nothing will happen to you. Good stuff, Imogen. Halfway already. 30 feet up, she freezes. 
It's not the start the group had hoped for. Whenever you're ready. I got up to, like, the fourth one, then I was like, oh, I've got to come down. Late. I could feel my legs going. Next up is Andrew. To be honest, I just feel a bit, like, overwhelmed. There's just uh, really an awful lot going on in all directions, and I can't really handle more than one thing happening. It just seems to be stuff happening everywhere. It just kind of throws me a bit. That's just getting me ready. For Andrew, who's been virtually a prisoner in his bedroom for the last five years, it's a huge step. You good? Yeah. All right, now just stop right there. Okay, right there. Now let go with that hand and just stand there. Don't go anywhere. Relax. Down here in your hips. Once I got up, I felt a little bit better. Then as I did more and more things, it just started to become like, I just became more confident. And towards the last ones that I was doing, it was just no problem at all. Spurred on by Andrew, the rest of the group climb up to the canopy. Swing. I think Andrew is heavily enjoying himself up there. He has a big perma smile on his face. And it's making us all happy. It's quite contagious, his joy. Just seeing everyone out there and like, you can tell that everyone is going through their own little exposures. <laughs> That's a hard one. Jack and Andrew held hands, and Jack can't hold people's hands. I mean, this is incredible. Perfect, perfect. I can barely reach now. Right, I'm gonna have to get it. Whoa, whoa. Session over, and the group shares a bonding moment. American style. This is our big thank you to Bernie. All <laughs> right, thank you. <laughs> and Olivia, come on. Group All around. around. Big yeah, squeeze. The ropes course has given the group great confidence. Now they think they can do anything. So Josh wants to take on another challenge. He's touched Pete with one hand, but not the other. Just minutes in, things start to go wrong. Josh was in the middle of an exposure, and he's only done a couple exposures in a confined space, like a van. So he essentially has a panic attack. Let's go. Whatever you need. Let's go. Let's Should we go. pull over? Go. OK, we're going to pull over, Jordan. OK. Let's go. Let's go. Pull way off. Thank you. I had to jump out of his way for him to get out of the van. He nearly knocked me out. He's probably had to bar Stuart's seatbelt, came out with him and everything. It's hard watching anyone go through it because I know how tough it is. You just need to get as far away from that situation as possible because it feels like your body tells you that you are in danger. To me, it is like seeing a bus come towards you. The natural thing to do is just get the hell out of the way. When you do feel pure fear, you can almost taste it. Witnessing a full-blown panic attack has stunned the group. You know better than anybody what it's like to have a panic attack, so you yes. can explain what's going on for you. It's just, it feels like the biggest roller coaster, the biggest, like, being afraid of fire or being afraid of drowning or being afraid of a bomb, being afraid of anything like that, all in your face, all in one go, all of those things. It's like fear personified. It's 15 minutes before Josh feels well enough to get back into the van. It's a massive setback for him, but there are even bigger challenges to come. Still shell-shocked from Josh's exposure, 
the group check into a motel. They have less than 12 hours to pull themselves together before the next stage of the camp. What's scaring me the most is if I've come here and gone through all of this, just to go home and be exactly the same as I was before I left, then I'm going to feel like it's time wasted. When Josh did his exposure and had to leave, I was really actually scared for him because mm. he had a fear of kind of being trapped. Yeah, but also like if he can't move. So it's like both together. But there's one person on a high. I do feel quite different in myself, really. I think it's it's just been like day one, a little bit better day two. And, uh, you know, just as days have gone by, I think I've just felt as though I've just more accepted into a group. And it is just making me feel a lot more confident in general. Uh, curtain up the performer, ready for the camera's aim. With an evening off from therapy, some of the group head for the hot tub. No, I just do that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, here he comes, good man. Scooch over. One more coming in. And remarkably, there's another arrival. Andrew, 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 Andrew. Andrew! Oh, last time he was in a hot tub? Uh, probably never. Ah, oh, first time hot tub. <laughs> it's turned into more of a rap video. Oh, oh! oh! The group are up early for a hearty breakfast at a classic American diner. Spirits are still high from last night. Yeah. I can't believe that that man thought I were involved in a porn movie. I know. <laughs> 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 oh, Andrew. Andrew. Andrew, I love you. <laughs> Two days ago, back at the camp, Jack drank out of a glass for the first time in nine years. You ready? Okay. He's now decided to do it in a crowded restaurant. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need you. I need you to do the tap, please. This time, there's no way for Jack to sterilize the glass. He has to make do with running it under the hot water tap. I think I'm only taking this one to the lips. OK. What's your number? Six now. What was it? Was it the glass? Was it the sink? Was it the kitchen? Or uh, everything. I didn't do it, but he's like... Jack's OCD is, is very intense. He's constantly being triggered. And it, it, he has so many different things going on at different levels at the same time. I didn't sleep all last night. And uh, sometimes it affects me. I get angry and stuff, and I'm panicky and nervous. The only thing that gives me a little bit of relief is to hit something, but I'm trying really hard not to. It's the halfway point, and from here, the group face a four-hour boat ride to reach the start of their trek. It's already been mentally draining. Imogen, she was questioning whether or not she was really even going to be able to do exposures on this program. And uh, over the course of four days, she's made a huge amount of progress. 
thing that is most scariest about doing things is the, not the actual doing of it, it's the anticipation of doing it. But I've completed challenges that I wouldn't have completed before I came here. I felt more relaxed than I felt in 10 years, and that's because yeah. I've just gone around talking to everybody. Yeah. Yesterday I did, I went in a hot tub with everyone, Rich was something I've never done. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought that I would do. It gave me such a lot of confidence. I just need to make the most of it. Initially, I wanted to just have a minute of a day without OCD, but now I feel like I can do a lot more than that. I still get the intrusive thoughts the same amount, but I'm training my brain to not automatically ritualise. Now we're going out in the woods, and it's going to be very physically uncomfortable. What I think is truly unique about what we're doing is, uh, is the environment that we're taking them to. I don't think that there's anywhere else in the world, somewhere where people are taking six people with a mental health disorder out into the woods. It's another way of teaching them that they can push themselves so much farther than they think they can. on Extreme OCD Camp. The group strike out into the great outdoors. This is not, I'm not made for this, I'm like a city boy. This is the worst thing ever. Wow. Michelin quality. Yeah. Ew! An environment that will take them to breaking point. He's just pushing and pushing to go further and further. They are terrifying themselves over and over and over again. They're completing an ultra marathon here. 